the last time I saw them was 2006. And my baby, my youngest, had just been born. He was, I don't know, a few weeks, maybe a few months old. And I was in the nursery uh, room and I was nursing him. And then I finished and burpees and everything else. And I was holding him and just having quality time with my baby. And I feel these two little friends in the room just looking at us and smiling, like happy, you know. And I say to them, hey, guys, I know you're here. You know, I really like to see you again. And they said, no, 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 you're going to get scared if you see us physically. I said, of course I won't. I know who you are. Like, come on, you know, I really want to see you. Come on, just make yourself visible again. I said, no, 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 you're going to get really scared. Okay, then. Well Surprise! <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Driving to the Rest, but this time we're actually combining it with our Woo for Thought Right, podcast. so if you're not familiar with the Woo for Thought podcast, it, 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 it uses as its source document An the Woo essay. for Thought essay. And essays are what I really like, which is... A long multiple read. Multiple <laughs> pages, a long read that really gets into, you know, All sorts of a topic from a lot of angles in uh, Amelia's writing style, yes. which yes. expands your mind always. Uh -huh. And so one of the things that I've been thinking about is, you know, when we do our driving to the res, we do it based on a newsletter. Mm -hmm. And a woo for thought that publishes a little bit less frequently. Once a month, on occasion, then. it's like oh, once a month ish. Months, every once, once every two months, I think. Right, but we have a stack of them built yes, up a little bit. Do. So I thought that would be a good idea to bring attention to them through mm -hmm. our driving to the res podcast. Mm -hmm. You can also just subscribe to it at the woo for thought. Yep. And we are supported by our sponsors, which yes. happen to be subscribe. Scribe Star members, mm -hmm. right? They are also Walk With Thee Now members. Yes. Those members have access to what we call the second hour. Yes. So I thought it would be a good idea to have a second hour with our Woofer Thought essay. Yeah. Because so it will be kind of double published. But if you want to really like get into this essay, you mm -hmm. can join us in our second hour. At Subscribe Star. At Subscribe Star. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll probably have two hours of <laughs> in-depth <laughs> Yeah. Tearing into the essay topic. In this case, this week or month. This month. It's going to be about... Fairies, elves, and nature spirits. Fairies, elves, and nature spirits. If you're on the video, you'll see be able to see a photograph that Larry took Ooh. in the forest near where we live of Ooh. a fairy. Maybe take Maybe it out like of that. that. Oh, it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> We're trying to make it so it doesn't shine. It's so glossy. Yeah, it's so well, glossy. In the picture, you can see right here yeah. the fairy on the stick. Mm -hmm. And right here, you can see <laughs> the fairy magic. <laughs> so anyways, we'll, anyways, we'll publish that picture with the yeah, essay with the, the everything. And just and um, for notes. a try, I'll just try it. If you want your own print... I can print you one. Sign it and send and it to you. And sign it and send it to you. Yeah. For the low, low price of... It's not free 99 because I do have to buy the ink. I do have to buy the paper. And the postal And the postal. So yeah. uh, we'll work out a price and uh, it'll be fair and reasonable. Yeah. Probably in the $20 range. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yep. Then you can have some fairy magic. You can have your very own house. fairy magic picture. In your house. Frame it if you like. You can have... Four by six, five by seven, eight by ten. I don't know if I can get much bigger than that. Okay. But no, eight by ten should be. Eight by ten is plenty. Easier to send. I so, think. you know, inquire through, um, if you're on a subscribe star, you know. You, you know can go to drivingtotherest.com and there's going to be an email there too. Yeah, you can inquire through the email. Yes. This is a, an contact. experiment, it you know. An experiment. You got the first whack at it. Uh -huh. If it turns out, you know. That we if like it's something it. people really like and I don't mind doing it too much, then I'll I'll make it more formalized. We'll have yes. a store or put it on wherever yeah. it goes. But for right yeah. now, if you really want one, mm -hmm. figure it out. <laughs> yes. And I'll do my best to get it to you. Sounds good to me. Okay. 
One of the questions I am often asked is, do fairies exist? <laughs> I just showed you. <laughs> so this essay is pretty long. And um, we, on the second hour, we'll go into depth on about all the different points. Right. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about in this first part is a couple of things. In the essay, I classify the fairy folk with experiences of the ones that I, ha I had actually seen personally. And now that we're going out into the world at a public level with events and things, Larry has been meeting some very interesting people. Totally. I, I mean, our last festival, we were just, I just got back from. Mm -hmm. I met a fella who had just incarnated this time, having been a fairy last time. How did he find that fairy. out? How did he find so that out? So he found that out through a regression. Oh, nice. And he's got these experiences in his life that are a little bit like, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. And so it was through a regression that he tried to find answers. And the regression, you know, is a is a method where you connect with your higher self and your like less um, current conscious memories. Oftentimes we'll tamper down our conscious memories a little bit so that our reality experience is the one we're having right now, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's got its purposes, but we want to scratch at it sometimes. And so mm -hmm. when we scratch at it, we have an access point. Hypnotic regression is one of those. Mm -hmm. So he would be traveling. He, he was um, in the woods. Walking with his dog, I think Shasta or someplace like that. In Shasta, the mountain. It might, have been, yeah, it might have been Shasta. I think I remember he was at Shasta for one of these oh, okay. hikes. One of the other hikes, he was at a different location, but Shasta was one of them. And he was walking with his dogs, and his dogs were making a little ruckus in this bush, mm -hmm. like a big bush with you know leaves and stuff. And he, he's like, "What's going on, guys? What's going on?" He's got a fairy in there, or what? Like mm -hmm. kind of joking with his dogs, right? So he pulled back the brush to look in what the dogs were barking at. And it was a fairy, a literal fairy sitting there going. Zzz, the little ones? Yep, a little one. Ah, going yeah. back and forth and back and forth. It was busy and it's like going out of time. Like, zzz, zzz, zzz. that's how he described forward. it. Yeah, yeah, it was like. Zzz, zzz, zzz. <laughs> and then he, he looks like, oh, wow, I see you. And then the fairy looked at him with his eyes like, what? You see me? <laughs> and he <they> went, shoop. <laughs> and it zipped off, right? So he was like. That's like the one we had in there. Oregon. It's like the one we had in Oregon, yes. Mm. The one that came riding a dragon or dragonfly or whatever. It was a big bug. Like a big bug, yes. yeah. Yeah, like a bumblebee or something. And it was, yeah. yeah, it was very unusual. And then when it's noticed that it's got saw, seen, it was like, what? I'm yeah. out of here. <laughs> I'm out of here. And so, uh, you know, that had a, some impact on him. And then it wasn't weeks or a month later, he was on another hike. And it was up the mountains a bit, the Rocky Mountains area. And he encountered a gnome, a little fella with the gnome hat and yellow pants and shirt, maybe with his axe or whatever they have. I don't know. It's like, is this, hello? And the gnome, he's like, am I, hello? And the gnome said, yes, hello. And he's like, how are you? I was like, oh, I'm, I'm fine. How are you? I'm, I'm great. Um, what are you doing? He's like, um, the gnome's like, I'm walking. <laughs> it's like, well, do you live here? He's like, well, yes, of course I live here. I'm a gnome. <laughs> this is where I live. It's like, it's, it's, it's nice to see you. He's like, yes, it's, it's very nice to meet you too. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, oh my gosh, what is going on with me, right? Yeah. So he, he did a regression and in his regression, he found that uh, his most recent life memory of a uh, past experience of life it was as a fairy folk. Mm -hmm. So he still has that, you know, deep affinity connection. and connection, mm -hmm. those links. Mm -hmm. Although he's, he's not a fairy now. Right. He wasn't even dressed like a fairy. I was expecting, you know, fairy folk, you know. They usually do dress they might flowers, be flowery, to do or to maybe with, yes. pop, you know, um, their sparkly hair. stuff. I know when I hang out at fairy festivals, there's a lot of glitter involved. Yes, often. Lots of glitter, yes, yes. Mostly for men and women. Yeah. Sparkly clothes. I have a yeah. lot of you know, tch, 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 colors, clinky, and clinkies, and bells, there'll be crystals whistles. and bells. Always some bells, some mm -hmm. tinkle, tinkle, tinkles. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. This he, he was dressed like I was at this event. He had a sweatshirt. He had slightly dirty blue jeans. <laughs> He had shoes that had been up and down the trails a few times, right? <laughs> and he was wearing his baseball cap with the logo of, uh, I think he had a fish on it. 
Oh. <laughs> very relatable <laughs> he, for you. It was very relatable. We had a, a nice conversation. Uh -huh. But he is undoubtedly that, you know. Mm. And I have no doubt if he were to go to a fairy festival, he would be wearing some glitter <laughs> and oh, some bells. Okay. <laughs> he would have bells on, but we were in the city, you know. I was like, yeah. oh, we got to In Portland, he needed. In Portland, it was more, in a strange way, more um, fairy like. To be that way <laughs> because right. there were so many tinklers running around yes. <laughs> so he was he was more and it was like more unusual in a way dressed normally <laughs> mm -hmm. it was quite yeah. funny yeah oh that's fun do you want to well let's talk about the the one we had because the guy was i haven't seen a gnome ever no i haven't seen a gnome walking down the trail no anymore. but we did see, or I, I think at the time you saw him too, but I don't think you remember it. Um, we did see a little guy on a bug. And I talk about that in the in the essay. I can either read that one or we can yeah, talk about read it. read it, honey. Okay. It's a I'll good chunk. It. It's, a good, it's a good part of that essay to, yeah. to, to bring in. Yeah. Okay. Although the gnomes might have been like the little fairies that... Folk, they call themselves fairies. They're my little friends when I was a little kid. Okay. It says next, let's look at tiny little beings who are familiar from fairy tales. They look like tiny little humans with dragonfly or butterfly wings. Mm -hmm. Most famous were the fake photographs by two young cousins, Elsie Wright and Francis Griff Griffin Griffiths. And they did it in the early 1900s. They were total fakes. Yes. Personally, I don't think there were any tiny little humanoids flying about with dragonflies or butterfly wings. I did not believe in them until I saw one myself. But even today, the thought come, crosses my mind that perhaps I was seeing things, but not so likely now that other people have seen them right now. It's, inter in it's true, yes. And yeah, I have it's, some more pictures, And the same remember? description. The same description. Mm, the same description. The same like yeah, action. Yeah. There's no logical reason for me to have been seeing things at the time, but the experience was so out of my concept of reality that it is hard to think of it as, a, as real. Here's what happened. Larry and I were on a road trip and stopped at the Oregon Vortex in Gold Hill. Uh, on that first visit, we didn't go in as we had one of our dogs with us and the dog was not allowed to go in. Apparently, dogs go unhinged within the vortex, so they don't even allow service dogs in. Disappointed, we took a walk up and down the road where the vortex is located. On our way back to the car, a super large bug started flying near my face. At first I thought it was a huge bumblebee and I ignored it. Eventually it pestered me so much that I stopped and looked at it. And my eyes and mouth fell open as I saw a tiny little man flying on a bug that hovered there in front of my eyes. His face did the same thing, shocked that I could see him perhaps. And as I shouted at Larry to look at him, he flew away. After that incident, it has been difficult to say that these flying little humans don't exist. He didn't have any wings, exactly, but he was tiny and he was flying about. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember his face was so shocked. <laughs> <laughs> you can see me? Yes. <laughs> That's what the guy said too. It's like, oh, you can see me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boom, gone. Not like to be seen very often. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I have a couple more pictures. The fairies, the fairy wings. Yes. From the, the crystal, crystal. Yeah. Two crystal of those. Photography, crystal yeah. photography have those. I'll probably include those in the fairy, fairy photo package. Nice. Nice. Another type of fairy um, would be, well, I talk about a few here, but um, the one, the next one I want to talk about because. I also have a lot of people ask about them and talk about them. Are the Fae or Elves? Not to be confused with the fairy above, these beings are often described as taller than humans, thin and very fine features with slightly pointy ears. Their clothes are elegant and made from natural materials. Their culture is one of hierarchical pyramid of responsibility rather than power over others. Hierarchies like humans have. They very much care for forests, lakes, rivers, oceans, and nature in general. They keep they keep themselves separate from us, for the most part, but have been known to mate with humans. The results of these matings are humans who are different from others, are fine in features, usually tall, and don't fit into society very well. 
Although in most books these are depicted as white, my experience of them has been different. Their skin tones are not uniform, going from deep blues and browns to the lightest of pale white, and they do not have what we consider races within their overall fey race. At an experiential telepathy level, I have met two fey societies. One was on a hill at La Connor, Washington, USA, and the other was in Dublin, Ireland. The society in Ireland seemed to be underground near the arboretum there. Neither incident was physical in nature, but both had the witnesses who also felt the beings communicating without me mentioning it. <laughs> the Lacuna experience happened during a public event we had there. During that event, we had an outing to a nearby park. The park was on a hill. When we got there, the Fae came to us and made themselves known. This was entirely experiential telepathy experience where the participants of the event were able to connect directly to the beings there. In Ireland, Dublin, I was there visiting friends and at some point we walked to the Arboretum. As we were getting closer, I received a call, what I call a ping, following the computer language of one computer or person sending a ping to command, used to test the ability of a source computer to reach a specified destination computer. I answered it. And what followed was, again, an experiential telepathy experience. I did not see them physically. Do you remember the one in La Conner? Because you were there, huh? Yes, I totally remember the one in La Conner. What was your experience of it? My experience, oh, no, 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 La Conner, no, I didn't. I thought you were talking about Mount Adams. It's a D. No, at La Conner, you were there. I was there, but I didn't, uh, I don't have a recall of a, a Fey experience. Oh, that's really interesting. I wonder if all the other I probably ate the food. <laughs> And that brings us to a different point, which is, I have been asked if these type of fairy folk, the fae, the fae are related to Lemurians. Oh, yeah. And the answer is no, I don't they're not Lemurians. That. Lemurians are just human who haven't chosen a like that paradigm are, and are part of that larger Earth. The larger Earth. The larger Earth. I noticed that seating. Yes. And not a different species like the Fae are. They're definitely a different species. Yeah, I find it fascinating that you forgot about that hill and connecting with them and stuff like that. Yeah, I wasn't as uh, connected at the Laconer event as other ones because I had an event coming right after it that my attention was probably on. Mm. So maybe I didn't participate quite fully enough. Yeah, maybe. And you had other things in your mind too. Uh, I had triangles and all kinds of things happening. <laughs> yeah. That was a, uh, what we would call a shaken and stirred shaken section and of my stirred. life. Yes, Fair. a lot of alcohol. Not a, okay, son. <laughs> okay, so um, another thing is higher up on the article, but I did want to talk about it actually because... When you talked about this guy who saw the gnome, mm -hmm. this actually might relate a little bit. So when I was a little kid, I had a couple of friends and um, the adults thought they were imaginary friends, but they were actually physically there. And they looked like they were the height of children. So they, I was very little. The last time I saw them, I think I was about four years old or so. I can't exactly recall, but four or six, something like that. That was the last time I physically saw them before they told them that I wouldn't be able to see them anymore, but I would be able to feel them if I wanted to. Um, and they looked about my height and now as an adult, as I recall how they looked, I could tell that they had wigs on, like hair <laughs> and children's clothes. And they were my friends and they would guide me through life and tell me what was safe to say to adults and what wasn't and stuff like that. Um, they were very fun and cheeky. Like I was thinking about them today as we were preparing for this podcast and in the mornings. So at the moment, if you're in video, you'll be able to see me showing you a little medallion. It's a black circle that I'm testing out to create some power objects that I'm going to give away to our friends in Christmas, but I'll also be going to be selling those as well. Um, and so I'm testing the material and this medallion is made out of that... Um, shungite. Shungite. Okay. From Russia. Yeah, I got it from a 
source, the highly respected source in Russia. And I've been wearing it for like a few weeks now to test it out. Is this real? Does it work? And all that. And I can tell that it's real. It's really, really cool. So I'm definitely going to make these power objects. Anyways, I've been wearing it nonstop. I haven't taken it off. And this morning I get up and it's not around my neck, right? Yeah. It's not on. I'm like, hmm, what just happened? I don't recall taking it off, but maybe I did. You know, when I'm usually when I'm writing book in my head, I do stuff and I don't remember, right? So that's not out of context at all. And I have a walk-in closet where I get dressed, right? And as we were preparing for this recording, I went into my closet because I was a little bit cold. So I went to get this fluffy jacket. It's kind of a cardigan that's all fluffy. And if you see the video, you can see how fluffy it is. It's very fluffy. <laughs> it's like, very, really it's fluffy. super fluffy. Very, very fluffy, right? So um, I, I put it on and then I look Right next to my face, there's a little cubby hole and hanging from the cubby hole in a perfect shape is the medallion just hanging there, right there in front of my face. Saying, here I am. And even if I had unconsciously taken it off somewhere, there is no way that I would put it there. That's Mm -mm. one place I would most certainly... (laughs) Not put it there. (laughs) Okay. My jewelry and my necklaces don't go there. They don't go there. And I don't hang things on the edge to hang right in front of my face like that. You definitely don't do that. Yeah. There are some definite things you don't do. And things that don't go there do not go there, period. Right. So I'm like, okay, little people maybe, because, I mean, I don't talk about the little people in the article, but those are typical, typical things. That, yes. Yeah, and I was like, little people maybe, you're cheeky, you know, and I grabbed it. And as I held it in my hand, I felt my guy's energy, the, the little friends, my no little way, friend's you energy. Did. I did, yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So they're oh my gosh, you guys. So... I put it on, you know, I'm wearing it right now. It's really cool. And obviously when I, if I do actually get around to making this beautiful (laughs) (laughs) power objects for people, I'll, I'll let you know on my newsletter with my glasses. Anyways, so these little guys, they would let me know what to do, how to stay invisible to adults and stuff like that. Like invisible in my capacity to see it differently because adults, at the time, in the 1960s, they didn't respond well to children who could perceive the world differently. So they made sure I was safe. And the last time I saw them, and I've told this story lots of times in different places, but the last time I saw them was in 20, 2006. And my baby, my youngest, had just been born. He was, I don't know, a few weeks, maybe a few months old. And I was in the nursery uh, room. And I was nursing him. And then I finished and burpees and everything else. And I was holding him and just having quality time with my baby. And I feel these two little friends in the room just looking at us and smiling, like happy, you know. And I say to them, hey, guys, I know you're here. You know, I really like to see you again. And they said, no, 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 you're going to get scared if you see us physically. I said, of course I won't. I know who you are. Like, come on. You know, I really want to see you. Come on, just make yourself visible again. I said, no, no, no. You're going to get really scared. I said, no, no. Come on, I know who you are. Come on, dudes. Let's just do this. It's it's fine. I'm done with this invisible thing. You don't have to stay invisible anymore. And then they eventually said it. Very well, but we warned you. And they materialized in front of my eyes. The two of them, a boy and a girl. And my body screams with my baby in my arms and runs out of the room, down the stairs and into the kitchen. Now, this is a big house. And I, all the way as I was screaming and crying, I tried my soul side, you know, the conscious side. It's like, stop, stop, you know, they're going to disappear again. Don't run. And it was my body, like my physical body elemental who had freaked out. Physical body elementals don't like things suddenly appearing in front of their eyes. 
and she had a baby, mm-hmm. right? So she took she over. Double protective. Yeah, she took over and she ran. She ran. And then it's like, nah, finally, when I finally calmed her down at the kitchen, oh my God. So I ran back upstairs, right? They were gone. Oh, they'd gone invisible again. But I could hear me. I could hear them laughing. Giggling, I'm sure. Not just giggling. They were laughing. Ha ha ha. Oh my gosh. But I'm wondering, you know, it's like, it feels like maybe the guy, the gnome that the guy saw mm-hmm. could possibly be related, you know, mm-hmm. like maybe the same thing. And um, I never like felt. I mean, people have asked me, what were they? And I've told the story in UFO conferences. They could be small aliens, aliens, you know. They could have been like humanoid greys, you know, gray. like little ones, three foot tall or whatever. And um, so, you know, it's like very difficult. To and classify. To classify. And we, were, I was in a, an event once in a UFO place, a conference, and... The host of the place had a way to communicate with other entities through um, a method of table tapping, which is used, it has been used by spiritualists and other people in Europe before. Mm -hmm. Anyway, they used this method with another person and they were spelling out the name of these beings, these two guys, right? The boy and girl. And they call themselves fairies. Nice. So that's why I included them. Like, okay. I don't know I think they're about pulling one, putting that. one on. It's like, this is, sounds think, like another joke. I think it's a joke. Yeah. And I even said it. I don't know about that. I think they're joking. Yeah. But it's like, no, no, no. They're fa- fairy yes. <laughs> fairy yes. <laughs> fairy yes. Fairy yes. <laughs> fairy yes. Anyways, I thought I'd share that. Well, you know what happens if you're at a UFO conference? It's all aliens. You know what happens if you're at a Sasquatch conference? They're all Sasquatches. It's all Sasquatches. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess you get what you expect in yeah. some way. Yeah, you do. You do. Yeah. And, um, so and they, that... yeah, and in, in a sense, it begs the question mm-hmm. we're defining these names of things that have been mm, experienced throughout time, but we've given them various names. And so, Sometimes are the names really accurate? Uh, that's a good point. Um, I have traveled a lot and I've lived in different places around the world with different cultures. Yeah. And I have, because I'm interested in these things, I have looked to see in the local culture what kind of stories and mythicism, mythical creatures they have. And for sure, the descriptions look the same. But their interpretations and their names are different. Right. It's like almost like uh, flying turtles in a way. Yes. Yeah, exactly like, like that. Can flying you explain, turtles yeah, is a reference. Yeah. Well, I did a past life regression also. Yes. And it was in, re- reg- in reference to the very first episode of Driving to the Red Second Hour, which is my, uh, my regression with Fred into our um, shared experience of waking up in the morning with our hair combed backwards perfectly (laughs) which having your hair perfect in the morning i don't know how many people wake up with their hair perfect in the morning i see it in the movies all the time (laughs) i mean perfect makeup perfect hair perfect all but it hasn't really happened to me except for when i was in the coast guard and i was in boot camp and they cut all my hair off it it woke up (laughs) every morning the same it's like you don't have to do anything right but if you have any hair on your head it comes up west messed up in the morning. Yes. So I'd woken up that morning and went to the mirror and I looked and I was like, wow, my hair is perfect. That's strange. I didn't brush it or nothing yet. <laughs> I looked a little closer and it was backwards too. So, this, so it always goes one way. It just uh-huh. men, most men anyway. I don't know about women, but most men, they, we brush our hair the same way. And it's like that since high school. Yes. Or whenever it was that we started actually caring about what our hair looked like. Right. From that day forward, it almost always looks the same. Mm -hmm. So it was completely backwards, but perfect. I was like, wow, that's so strange. And I shared it on a Sunday dinner morning. It's like, yeah, guys, the strangest thing happened. I woke up and my hair was perfect. Mm -hmm. At the Shaman Shack, right? And backwards. Yes, at the Shaman Shack. And backwards. (laughs) Uh That was the uh, punchline. Mm -hmm. 
because perfect is weird enough, but backwards and perfect is like something very, else. Very strange, yeah. So uh, it turned out Fred had woken up that same morning and his hair was also perfect and backwards. And he's way more particular about his hair. Oh, than he's me. very particular about his hair. Yes. His haircut, his hairstyle, for his hair to be his backwards. hair, everything must and always will be the same way. Yes. yes. And like when I sit down with Lori to get a haircut and she says, what do you want? It's like, like shorter, <laughs> like half of that or so. I don't know. <laughs> he has extreme Fred says, no, I need the number one and number three and this and that and the other and there the other thing with that and the other and that goes this way and don't make that too short or else it'll be the wrong. And then, you know, he's Very he's particular. defined in particular because it's his he's an engineer and he is. It's his personality. It's yeah. it's 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 so him. for his hair to be perfect backwards, and backwards. That is, yeah, not a coincidence. That's extraordinary. On that. And on the same note, that was not a coincidence. That yes. was a message strong enough for us to like break through the yes. fog chatter. So and then, and then Lori also, huh? She Lori had, a, had her pajamas, pajamas backwards on or something. Out. I can't so remember like, what it was. How do you get your pajamas off and back on in the middle of the night, <laughs> inside out and backwards? Yeah, or something weird with it. It was Very really odd. weird. Yeah. Very odd. So all all taken together, we knew, well, honestly, even all of us were like, what? no, that's strange, huh? Wow, that's really strange. Right? That's a coincidence. And that still wasn't enough for us to like <laughs> knock on Figure the door. And Nelia said like, Hmm. Once is interesting. Twice is no coincidence. That's a message to you guys. What is the message? Maybe yeah. you guys should look. Yeah. And three times. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. So the way that we looked was the regression by therapy. using the process that Fred was trained or mm -hmm. is trained in. And mm -hmm. so he did a regression on me to tap into that night. What experience do we have? Yeah. We write about that and talk about that in Driving to the Res. And um, just look up spaceships. It's even on the sub <laughs> sub stack. There's a newsletter about spaceships that yeah. you uh, you wrote uh, not too long ago, a few months, and it detailed your own visit to wherever it was we were going. Yes. You know, so if you're curious, go look up spaceships in the sub 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 stack, uh -huh. and uh, you'll get the the nitty gritty for this episode. Right, one of my past lives in the regression. I was with uh, some friends and we were sitting on our horses on the side of the canyon, looking out over the canyon, enjoying the evening. And it was like sunset -y. It's just as I remember it now. It might be it was sunrise. I don't remember now. We saw three flying turtles mm -hmm. fly by. <laughs> flying turtles. Flying turtles fly by. Yes. So that's the interpretation we're talking about. Because in so, I mean, we will say spaceships, right? But at the of time, they look like a turtle, mm -hmm. the shape of a turtle, and they're flying. Right. So it's the giant flying turtle flew by. In Alaska, <laughs> it's a flying clam, by the way. Yes, you With find people that inside. When I yeah. when I flew up to Alaska yeah. and I got off the plane, I want and they're right on the wall, right in front of me, is this giant flying clam people. with people in it. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Yes. Do you guys know what that clam, yes. clam is? Yeah. yeah. So definitely the interpretation. There's interpretations right? involved the in these world yeah. in these words, and it might be similar or same beings, mm -hmm. and we also might be assigning a shape and a size to them based mm -hmm. on what we're seeing. So definitely. Yeah. All right. So for the second hour, we're going to continue the discussion. This is an experiment. We'll see if we like it. Right. And for our supporters who are going into Subscribestar to sponsor all the work that we do. Thank you. And also in Woke With Me Now. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All of you. And um, yeah, we're going to be talking about that. But before we go. I know there's one more thing. Very important. Very important. And we actually should have started with this. Yes. Well, but maybe we'll edit that a little bit. Well, since we'll you made edit it. it we might we'll have a clip at the beginning. Yes. We'll see. We'll see yes, what happens. We'll do. At any rate. Here's a clip. Especially this since you've made start. it this far. Yes. Oh, wait. <laughs> okay, begin. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell them already. Just tell get them. it out of your mouth. So Come on, tell them. One thing I want to make sure that you know. It's like when we talk about things like this woo for thought about fairies and aliens and flying turtles and such. It's to expand your 
awareness, right? Mm-hmm. So these mm-hmm. aren't unfamiliar things to you and you don't get like taken away by some narrative designed to like grab you and distract you for a little while because we don't need distracted. You don't need distracted right now. No. You need to pay attention. Yeah. So one of the other things is if you have an idea of the kinds of things that are coming, they won't grab you and sweep you away either. Mm-hmm. So to handle that, one of the very important rituals that we conduct is a looking ahead at 2020, whatever, the or 2010, year. whatever, or whatever, looking ahead at the next year. Mm-hmm. What games are afoot? What mm-hmm. narratives are at play? What designs are in motion? What things might pop in? What are the likelihoods of? And what should we be doing? And what should we be doing? Because when we're when we talk, we're talking about um, a split happening on the mm-hmm. planet right now. We're yeah. talking about being prepared and capable and able to navigate it comfortably. I mean, if you want to be uncomfortable to navigate the split, I guess it's fine. Go for <laughs> it. If you want to be comfortable in doing this, and split, knowledgeable, knowledge is required. Yeah. You got to like not get tricked. Yes. No tricks on you. So we have a looking ahead call. Mm-hmm. And that happens every year. Yes. And this one is happening in a couple of few days. Yes. And you can get your ticket if you haven't, if you're not a Subscribe Star member, you're not a Walk With You Now member, you you'll can go buy a special ticket. Yes. And that'll get you access to the meat and potatoes part of it. Meat and potatoes part of it. We'll do about a half an hour or so yeah, of fluffy bunny stuff. Hey, fluffy bunnies that have like issues with this or that, or just like, hey, what the heck's going on? I don't, be- I'm not sure if I'm going to like like this or whatever hey just listen to the half hour we'll go cover the fluffy bunny we'll give the year a look at and then we'll really dig into it in the second half sort of like the second half of this yeah the things that you know if we were to t- say out loud on a public channel it'll just get deleted so why even yes, bother exactly. it's like we're just censored <laughs> no point in talking much. about it <laughs> if we didn't get deleted for saying it then Probably, I don't know if you should trust us too much. <laughs> so we just won't say it because we're like one strike and you're out, yeah. baby. <laughs> we also have like, you know, you're able to have a chance to support us. So even if you are in Subscribe Star and even if you are in Walk With Me Now, right? you know, you can buy a ticket. Right. Buy a ticket. Buy a ticket. Yeah. And thank you for the Christmas yes, present thank you or for the, the New Year's present, present or the uh, yeah. support supporting the human collective yeah. getting access to all this information. Exactly. Because it's uh, it completes the circle, you know. It does. It makes us feel like what we're doing. I mean, it actually supports us counts. so that we don't have to work at McDonald's to support the human collective. Although McDonald's <laughs> is paying pretty good lately. That's not my it's crazy. I, was like, hmm, I remember I, I that was know. my first job. I know. I was. I yes. loved it. I was we really good at it. I more spent, money. <laughs> <laughs> if we had just stuck with our McDonald's jobs, by now we probably had owned like 20 of them. Yes. Indeed. But I would be like uh, working for the um, shrinkage of the human collective awareness instead yes, exactly. of the expansion of it. Yeah. And so, you know, that's a little bit less satisfying. Yeah. So thank you for your support. And go over to Subscribe Star search for Inelia Benz and I think it is the $60 subscription that will get you into the call the monthly the annual call of looking at 2024 I thought it was all of them but no it's it's a $60 one that gets into the second I mean the 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 get you a free a free ticket to the call yes okay the free ticket to the call and walk with me now yes if you're on walk with me now you're set Okay, then. Yeah. We'll see you then in on the 31st of December, okay. 2023. And also in the second hour. Yeah. And if you happen to be looking at this podcast way in the future in 2024, you can go to the store and download the pr- recording of the Looking at 2024. Right. So if it's February or something, you're like, golly. <laughs> it's like, I really want to know what's going to be coming. Yes. In July. Yeah. Take a check. February. Yeah, check out the public June. recording and then. Check the recording out. Yeah. Buy the download for the second part, the meat and potatoes part. Good right. idea. See you then. Okay. See ya. The fairies keep waking you up in the middle of the night. And I was like, oh, that's what it was. Because I could not sleep for like two or three days. And I'm a very 
good sleeper. <laughs> it's like a superpower, actually. But there was just this, like, I kept like waking up, like, what? And going back to sleep and just, ah, ah, you know, like that. Yeah. And then it totally resonated when they said that. I was like, oh, they were basically poking and saying hi and giggling. And we're just like really excited that I was there. That was the the message I got. But then I was like, can you do that when I'm not sleeping? That'd be great. <laughs> and I think, they, I think they complied because I don't think that happened after that. But it was really nice. That's really cool. Yeah. Really cute. 